welcome wrestling fans to FMW Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling, Hardcore Wrestling Made in Japan. And today we're featuring something a little bit different. We're not focusing on one event, but we are focusing on one one-of-a-kind athlete. His real name, Eiji Ezake. Wrestling fans worldwide know him as Hayabusa. Coming straight up at you, I'm straight up John Watanabe, along with my tag team partner. I am Dan the Mouth Lavransky. And you're right, John, Hayabusa is one of the most unique wrestlers ever, whether it's in a regular mat wrestling style, high flying, hardcore. Hayabusa does it all. And we want to introduce Hayabusa to the North American fans, and we're going to do it with three of his greatest matches of all time. That's right, Dan. We're going to feature three tournament matches leading up to Hayabusa's quest for the double. Double championship held by his former friend, now arch enemy, Mr. Ganosuke. But first, we're going to get inside the mind of Hayabusa. What inspired him be to become a professional wrestler? What did it take to get him to where he is today? Let's see a montage of his famous high flying maneuvers and what goes on in his mind when he does them. Let's go straight up to Hayabusa. high-flying Hayabusa is, of course, famous for his various high-flying maneuvers. And even if you don't follow professional wrestling, you have got to be impressed by this grace and movement. That is absolutely correct. You know, the producers at FMW and Tokyo Pop, they picked the right title for this tape. He is the flying assassin. He is Hayabusa. And look at some of these moves. The man is so graceful in the air. There is no one else like him in the entire wrestling world. No one else like him. What Michael Jordan is to basketball, Hayabusa is to professional wrestling. And a great analogy there, John. He is unique. There is no one like Hayabusa. And look at these moves. Constantly, fast, over the top. Asai moonsault. Off the ladder, that is FMW style. Off the cage, that's FMW style. Frankensteiner. The Hurricane Rana, the Frankensteiner, no matter what you want to call it, it is done superbly by Hayabusa. When it comes to the Flying Assassin, the names of the moves are not important. Quarterback,基本的要素です。僕自身高いところってあんまり好きじゃないし、やっぱり危険は伴いますからね。どうしても当たっても外れても間違いなく自分に対しても僕が見る側の立場だとしたら、ハヤブサの試合を見るんだったら飛んでる姿を見たいし、やっぱり僕を見に来てくれる人たちってみんなそういう部分を期待してくれてる人が多いと思うんですよ。そういう期待があるんであ
自分に自身にオリジナルの技は何にもないんだなっていうのをすごい実感したんですねそ,そういう時にやっぱり飛び技の中でも何かどうしてもオリジナルの技が欲しいなと思って考えたのがフェニックスプラッシュだったんですよね一度だけあの試運転というか試し打ちをピエロ・ジュニアっていう選手にやったことがありますその時のお客さんの反応は今でも忘れませんけどねやっぱり、ね、飛び技の本番においてもああいう系統の技っていうのは使う選手が案外少ないんでもうやった瞬間にお客さんがあれだけ陽気なお客さんが完全に静まりましたもんね今のは何やったんだっていうそういうリアクションがあったんでそれでよしいけるっていう実感を持って日本に帰ってきました。is well known for his high flying moves that we just saw, but as a heavyweight wrestler, he is also known for his high impact power moves like these. そうですねやっぱり初,初公開した時ですよね本当やる時<笑>まだ僕自身がやっぱりその飛ぶ選手としてはある程度認められててもそれ以外のプロレスラーとしてやっぱりどの力量的な部分で日本のファンにどれだけ認知されしてもらってるかっていうのがね分かんなかった部分もあってそういう。のを一番見てもらうのにいい機会である大谷戦っていうもので最後にあれで決められたっていうのはすごい嬉しかったしうんだからそういう意味でもやっぱりあの時の「パルコンアロー」っていうのが一番僕の中では思い出に残ってますねで最後は「はやぶさのフィニッシュ」って言ったらやっぱり「パルコンアロー」だっていうふうに皆さんの中で定着すると嬉しいんですけどねはい。The high flying assassin Hayabusa. And it's going to be tough on both of these competitors because they're both fan favorites in FMW and they don't want to ruin their friendship. But at the same time, both Tanaka and Hayabusa want that double title and they both have vendettas against the evil Mr. Ganosuke. Let's go straight up to the first round. Now this match is going to be a special treat because this features a friendly rivalry between FMW's two most popular wrestlers, their most favorite fan favorites, Masato Tanaka and of course the high-flying Hayabusa. This should be an excellent match, both guys great in the ring and both guys good with the flying stuff, good with the power moves and good with the mat wrestling so I know we're in for a big time treat in this match between Masato Tanaka and the Flying Assassin. Assassin, the Falcon Hayabusa. And here we go. This one is underway. Look at this. Both guys kind of just checking each other out. Collar and elbow tie up, side headlock by Masato Tanaka, grinding away at the head of Hayabusa. Whip into the ropes. Shoulder block by Tanaka. Kip up by Hayabusa. Drop kick. 
flying drop kick sends Tanaka out of the ring. And these guys aren't waiting to get this one started, are they? Right out of the chute, they're flying, jumping all over the place. Oh, baseball slide miss, clothesline Ooh. by Tanaka. And this is amazing. I'm so surprised to see them both start off the match so intensely. And Hayabusa's got to shake that one off, that's for sure. Oh! oh. And Tanaka's going off the ropes. Oh, oh, Hayabusa countered that one. Hayabusa in control. Reversal by Tanaka into the ropes. Miss with a clothesline by Tanaka. Oh! Hayabusa goes down. Whoa! Over the top rope goes Tanaka. Hayabusa got a good move there. Tossed him over the top. Baseball oh. slide. Baseball slide by Hayabusa. And, and already, Hayabusa here we go. With the Asai moonsault. Moonsault by Hayabusa. Look at that. So graceful, so beautiful. And right on the mark takes Tanaka right to the floor. And Hayabusa gets back into the ring quickly. And I don't think Masato Tanaka wants to move at all at this point. I think he's just going to take a breather on the ring. He seems to be having a little bit of trouble with that knee there, though. But the referee's making a count, so Tanaka has to make it back in if he still wants to qualify for that double title. Held by Mr. Ganosuke, and both of these men have something personal against Ganosuke. That is right, man. Hayabusa and Tanaka, they're friends, but they both want to get at him, so they both have to take on each other in this initial round of the tournament. Hammerlock applied by Tanaka. Bring over the arm and shoulder of Hayabusa. Reversal into a hammerlock by Hayabusa. Good counter wrestling. Look at this beautiful mat wrestling. You know, Hayabusa is called the flying assassin, but he is great on the mat. Great amateur technique. Look at that. And both guys, look at that. Both guys knowing that the other can pull this kind of stuff off. You know, it's almost like a stalemate. It's like, okay, got to regroup here. Tanaka wants to go for a Greco-Roman knuckle lock test of strength. Tanaka has the upper hand in this one. Oh yeah, there's no doubt about it. In terms of upper body strength, look at Tanaka in comparison with Hayabusa. Look at the pectorals at on Tanaka. And he's cinching it right in. Cinching it right in big time. Oh, Hayabusa manages to break. Oh, and a kick to the gut. Armbar applied by Hayabusa. Once again, not only is Hayabusa a great high flyer, he can wrestle on the mat as well. And he's rubbing Tanaka's face in the mat right now. Oh, oh, nasty. Trying to work on that arm. See, because Tanaka likes to use those big time power moves, right? Those power bombs. But if you take away the arms, then Tanaka is not going to be able to pull off those moves. And Tanaka likes to use those forearm smashes. Also, clotheslines. Yeah, you take away one of his arms. What can he do? Exactly. Oh, but look at this. Tanaka gets the reverse, and now he's trying to ground Hayabusa. Again, very smart wrestling here by Tanaka, because we all know the tape is called the Flying Assassin. This man, if you ground him, you take away a big chunk of Hayabusa's arsenal. Oh, Tanaka really working on the leg of Hayabusa. Yeah, Hayabusa won't be able to go to the turnbuckles, to the ropes, if you take out one of Hayabusa's legs. That's, and you know, with moves oh. like that, he's definitely stretching those tendons in the knee, making things really tough for Hayabusa. Masato Tanaka, former ECW world champion in control right now. Oh! oh. Tanaka missed that one into the turnbuckles. And once again, Hayabusa working on the arm of Tanaka. Oh! oh. Look at that, the way he reefed on that arm. Just Arm wrenching that elbow out of the socket. Such intensity. Both of these men are wrestling hard, but they're not really breaking any rules, which is a treat for all of these fans in attendance. And speaking of the fans, you'll notice that at the very early stages of this match, they are very intent. They are very quiet. They are watching everything keenly. They realize that these guys are just getting warmed up and that this is probably going to be a long match, and they are just stuck glued on every single move. The fans in Japan really appreciate the art and psychology behind these basic wrestling holds. Right. They're not just into fancy high spots or costumes or music. I mean, these fans in Japan appreciate wrestling. As Hayabusa applies the headlock on Tanaka and still works over the arm of Masato Tanaka. And look at him. He's working that arm. He's also pulling on that arm, so he's reefing on the shoulder there, taking away the whole side of Tanaka. Oh, Tanaka in tremendous pain. If Hayabusa keeps working on that one body part, he might be able to make Tanaka submit. 
unbelievable. The, the look of pain on Tanaka's face. Oh! Stomping on the elbow. It's like sawing the leg off a table. Once you do that, the table is useless. Okay, both men back on their feet now. Irish whip into the turnbuckles. Oh, a knee to Tanaka by the high-flying Hayabusa. Oh, drop kick, drop kick. But look at it, it's a drop kick to the elbow. Unbelievable, we see drop kicks to the chest, to the face all the time, but look at the precision of Hayabusa as he goes straight back to work in that arm. Beautiful stuff here from Hayabusa. As he went to the top turnbuckle, he spotted his bullseye and he hit it right on target. Unbelievable. And now it's just a matter of wearing that arm down. Oh, Tanaka getting into the ropes though, so the ref's gotta break the hold. And I think we'll see the clean break right here. between these two fan favorites staying within the rules in their quest for the double championship. Reversal by Tanaka. And look at that. Hayabusa over the top. Oh, and a oh, kick to the head. Oh, Tanaka is bleeding from the nose. Good Lord, maybe he's broken that nose. Oh, and a nasty clothesline to the back of the neck. You know, those are bad enough when they hit you in the front, but in the back of the neck like that. It's amazing, no weapons are being used. This is not a hardcore match, and yet Tanaka is bleeding already. Unbelievable, well, there you go. Once again, showing you that FMW is much more diverse than a lot of its credit critics want to give it credit for. Oh, look at that, a great comeback by Tanaka going after that knee that he was already working earlier in the match on Hayabusa. I think Tanaka knows that so well. He knows where Hayabusa is hurting, and he's going to go after that one body part. Oh, dragon screw! Leg takedown by Tanaka, and Hayabusa is hurting. It's unbelievable. Look at this. This is the perfect portrait right here. Each guy has picked a body part, and he is trying to work the perspective body part on each guy, and they're both hurting at this point. Now it looks like a Tanaka is setting surfboard. Hayabusa up for a surfboard hold. This could be a submission. Oh, look at that. Oh! And now this is really tough. It pulls all the muscles in the back, not to mention all those knee muscles as well. But Tanaka with that hurt arm cannot hold up Hayabusa. That's right. They're going to find as they go through this match that certain moves in the repertoire have been instantly eliminated because of those sore limbs. Oh, continuing to work that leg. And again, both of these men are fan favorites. They both have a grudge of sorts against Mr. Ganosuke, the double, dub, double uh, title holder. Of course, Hayabusa has personal feelings against his former best friend from college, Ganosuke. And Ganosuke beat Tanaka for the double title. That's right. And that, Tanaka wants to gain revenge. That's right. Tanaka, he just wants that belt back. And he realized that the only way he could do it is he'd have to take on his friend Hayabusa in this round. Now look at this, trying to go for a figure four. Look at Tanaka trying to go for a figure four, but Hayabusa blocking it, holding that leg at bay, trying to keep it stretched. But Tanaka, look, the power of Tanaka. Does Hayabusa have the strength oh. to get out of that hole? No, he doesn't. Tanaka's in control right now. He has the figure four clamped on firmly on Hayabusa. He's Referee asking, Hayabusa, do you give up? And this is a very painful maneuver. I've had the pleasure, or actually the misfortune, of having the figure four put on me before. It hurts. Looks like Hayabusa was trying to reach for the ropes in order to uh, have the referee break the hold. Hey, oh, he's like got Hay it turned over. He's got it turned over. Reversal by Hayabusa. So right now Tanaka is in pain, and Tanaka is probably going to go for the ropes as well. Oh, what a no, struggle no, here. No, 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 no. Tanaka's turned it back over again. Wow, Tanaka is back in control. This is like a chess match between these two guys, you know? Every move counts in a direction headed towards the finish. Nothing is wasted in this match. And the fans realize that. They watch this intently as if they were watching a chess game. And look at this. Hayabusa, yes, gets the ropes. Ref's got to break the hole. And look at Tanaka again, the ultimate sportsman. Before the ref even says anything, he breaks the hold. And the fans here in this arena really appreciate this sportsmanship and hard-fought wrestling action. Oh, and there's one of those nasty forearms you talked about early, John, right to the face of Hayabusa. Irish whip into the opposite corner. Oh, Hayabusa stops Tanaka in his tracks. Power slam, power nice. slam, power slam by Tanaka, but Tanaka's hurting as well. That was nicely done, though. 
Tanaka was holding on to that arm. It seems like uh, Tanaka is still, uh, still in pain after Hayabusa has worked on his arm. While both of those guys worked over the respective body parts, they're going to hurt for the rest of this match. That's a guarantee. Oh, Tanaka, Tanaka is signaling to the audience. This is the tornado oh, DDT. Beautiful. Look at this. Look at the execution. Absolutely perfect with Hayabusa landing straight on his head. High impact wrestling at its best. Referee counts. One, two, oh, two no. counts. What a tornado DDT by Masato Tanaka. And Hayabusa managing to dig down deep, though, and he kicked out after a two count. Forearm smash by Tanaka. And another one. Very effective with those forearms. Oh, running oh, forearm. Oh, that's even worse. Getting a little bit of momentum behind oh, it. Oh, oh, kick by Hayabusa. Oh, but it's not enough to stop Tanaka. Waist lock by Hayabusa. Suplex. Oh. Suplex. Oh, my God. He dropped Tanaka right on his head. Oh, and a nasty kick to follow up. And Tanaka has fallen to the outside of the ring. Referee is making a count, or Hayabusa is going for one of his high flying moves. Oh, somersault press by Hayabusa. Exactly, the signature Hayabusa move right there, and one of the best, and it always looked so graceful. That's why they call him the flying assassin, Hayabusa. And even though he had that training in Mexico where he perfected all those high flying moves, it's almost like watching the ballet when you see Hayabusa. He's so graceful with those high flying moves. Well, just like. Uh, Ballet fans attend the ballet to see a certain favorite stars of theirs. Uh, wrestling fans pay top dollar to see Hayabusa do those high-flying maneuvers that he's so famous for and that he does so well. Exactly. But still not enough to keep Masato Tanaka's shoulders to be able to pin them for a three count. Looks like uh, Hayabusa is setting Tanaka up for the fisherman Ooh. bomb. The fisherman. Ouch. Fisherman buster in. Oh, Tanaka's hurting. Well, once again, the last few moves have all been centered around Tanaka getting dropped on his head and his neck. So it appears Hayabusa is really, really trying to put Tanaka out. Picks him up again. Double, double arm us. Power bomb. Tiger driver oh. into a tiger driver. Beautifully done by Hayabusa. Whether you want to call it a tiger driver, a power bomb, that's got to hurt. Tanaka, <laughs> Tanaka's back is hurting. Hayabusa looking very confident right now, sensing that he's getting closer and closer to a match against his former best friend, uh -oh. ugly rival, Up to the Gate. Falcon's Nest. The Falcon's Nest. Oh, the Phoenix Splash, the Phoenix Splash. Just one of many high-flying moves that Hayabusa employs off that top rope. Referee makes the count. One, two, three. Oh. What a terrible cover there by Hayabusa. He's just so worn out himself that he doesn't even have the energy to keep Tanaka to the ground. Hey, look, the wrestlers are coming out of the dressing room watching at ringside. That's how important this matchup is. They show true respect for each other in competition. They're always out there to root on each other. Oh, Tanaka got out of that one. Waist lock. But good counter wrestling on the part of both of these men, even as this match goes on. Oh, oh the Falcon Arrow, the is. Falcon Arrow, the Falcon Arrow. One, two, oh. And even though Hayabusa has won many matches with that very move at this stage in this match, it's not enough to keep Masato Tanaka down. Well, because uh, a championship is down the road for one of these men, and because both of these men have such a grudge against that FMW turncoat, Ganosuke, they really want to stay in this match and you know, be the victor uh -oh. in the end. Uh-oh, up to the Falcon's Nest again, but Tanaka's with him. No, but Hayabusa puts him back. What are we going to see here? Oh, and Hayabusa catches him. Look at this. Off the top, but he gets the big forearm right in the jaw of Hayabusa. And Tanaka is very proficient and very effective with those forearms. But at the same time, look, it took a lot out of Tanaka as well. He's still having trouble there. Referee's making a count. One Who's going to get to their feet first? Six, seven. Both of these men oh. back on their feet. Forearm smashed by Masato Tanaka. Oh! Flying forearm! Oh my god! I just, every time I see one of those Oh! Forearms. Frankensteiner! Frankensteiner! Oh! oh clothesline! A nasty clothesline from Tanaka. Referee counts. One, two, oh! Oh, that was close. And look at that. Even Hayabusa got even a little shot in there as he kicked out, getting a little of his own forearm right into the face of Tanaka. These guys, look at them, already starting to show the wear and tear of this match, starting to tire. Irish rip by Tanaka. Oh, far, forearm smash. Looks like uh, Tanaka is setting Hayabusa up for another. Ooh, oh, nice. Oh, cutter there by Tanaka. Oh, Hayabusa. 
it really looks down and out. One, two, three. Oh. Unbelievable. You know, if you're going to wrestle against Masato Tanaka, you've got to have like an iron jaw because he just loves to use all those moves, those forearms, that cutter, all working on the jaw. Here we go. Suplex? Looks like a superplex. Tanaka wow. is setting up the superplex. Is he going to be able to pull it off? Is Hayabusa weak enough? Can he do this? This is always tricky when you get up here and you pull these high moves. Oh, superplex. Beautifully executed, perfectly executed by Masato Tanaka there. Tanaka has plenty of upper body strength, and he still has that inner strength within him to pull these moves off. And Tanaka is going up Look, to he's the going, turnbuckle. He's in Hayabusa's territory. Frog wow. splash! The frog splash! The frog splash! One, two, oh! Unbelievable as Masato Tanaka takes a page right out of Hayabusa's book there with that beautiful splash. Attempting to play Hayabusa's own game of using high-flying maneuvers. Maybe Tanaka realized uh, his usual arsenal of power moves was not working, so then he's going for another game plan. Uh, he's back to the power with this one, though. Power bomb! Power bomb! And he's got him. Two, one, two. Oh. oh, and Hayabusa manages to kick out. Ganesuke has got to be watching this match intently in the back, wondering who he's going to face down the road uh, a man with power wrestling moves like Tanaka or a high flyer like Hayabusa. Ganesuke has all sorts of different game plans that he might utilize down the road. He's probably hoping that these guys both beat each other so much that neither one of them will be able to continue. Oh! And with moves like that, it could very well happen. Once again, Tanaka getting dropped right on the cerebellum. I think both the wrestlers in the ring and the fans in attendance are amazed that this match is still going on. It's unbelievable the punishment they've dished out. Oh! oh! Once again, oh, but he's turning it into a pin. Dragon suplex into a pin. One, two. Oh, oh. Not, quite, not quite, not enough. It's pretty hard to pin a guy from that position like that. An, an admirable effort by Hayabusa, but it's really tough to get a pinfall in that situation. Both of these men are using finishing mover, finishing maneuvers that would put an ordinary Easy for you man, to say. Yeah, finishing maneuvers that would put any ordinary man out. But boy, these two guys are kicking out, being very resilient. Still going at it, and once again, the Falcon goes to the Falcon's nest for the Firebird oh, Splash! The Firebird it. Splash! I never get tired of seeing that. Look at that, 450 degrees, straight on the mark every single time. The referee makes the count. One, two, oh, two counts. And I just love the height and the aerial tactics that he gets on that. I just never get tired of watching the Firebird Splash. But these two men have got to be tired at this point. Oh, oh the Falcon Arrow! Another the, one! The Falcon Arrow! That's the second time he's given it to Tanaka in this match. Is it enough to get the pinfall? Well, not with a cover like that. No, oh. there's no way. You can't have a lackadaisical cover like that on Masato Tanaka. And again, Hayabusa is not giving up. He's going to the Falcon's nest again. What are we going to see this time? Oh. oh, and Tanaka cuts him off, and Tanaka's up there now. Oh, no, I think uh, Tanaka is setting up the Ooh. power bomb. The power Ouch. Power bomb. One, two, three. Oh. And it was now Hayabusa's turn to get dropped on his head there by Masato Tanaka. Look at this. Tanaka looks confident now. Oh, Tanaka oh, no. is picking up Hayabusa. Not the running, not the running Death Valley driver. Yeah, fans know it's coming. The oh! Death Valley driver by Tanaka. Look at this. I mean, the Death Valley driver by itself is a nasty enough move, but running with it and dropping the man on his head like that, oh, beautiful. That, that makes it more effective, more dangerous. How much more punishment can Hayabusa take? Ooh. Oh, another power bomb. Look at it. One, just, look at it, just two. Pushes his face right into the mat. Well, that certainly was not a nonchalant cover, but Hayabusa somehow still kicked out. Look at that. I love it. Oh. And look at, like you mentioned before, John, all the FMW wrestlers, they're all out there cheering these guys on. They want to see a great finish. They want to see a clean finish. Tanaka was hoping that would be it, but I oh, out of that move. Oh, a nasty kick. Oh, oh forearm nasty smash. forearm. Oh. These guys, the intensity level, man. If I took all those forearms that Tanaka's been dished out, I'd been done a long time ago. I'd be missing all my teeth, too. It looks like Look, uh, Tanaka's going again, for Again! Again! Death Valley Driver! Oh, he gave it to him again! Running Death this Valley be Driver! It. This has got to be it! Two! Oh, oh! He kicked out of that! Two! Two! Look at this. Now, Masato Tanaka has taken two Falcon arrows, 
And now Hayabusa has taken two running Death Valley drivers. I think that shows you right there the resiliency of both of these men. Well, these boys, oh. are, these boys in FNW, they're able to take all sorts of crazy Whoa. punishment, and they're willing to dish it out. Oh, a oh. nice, beautiful spinning kick there by Hayabusa. Tanaka comes back. Oh. oh, the stiffness of those forearms. Oh, he kicks out again. Good Lord. I mean, there's nothing pretty about those forearms, but they are stiff. They are very powerful. They are stiff. They are tight. Whatever you want to call them, they are on the mark. Oh, Tanaka thought that that would be third times the charm. Oh, oh. overhead suplex by Hayabusa. But look at that. Tanaka back on his feet already. And another shot to the face. Now both of these men are down. Referee's making the count. Will That's either it. of these men be able to stand up? Who's going to be on their feet first? The various wrestlers cheer cheering each man on. Yeah, I think the fans are cheering both of these men, but I think Hayabusa is still the fan favorite in this particular match. Oh, look at now they're trading their own. They're trading forearms back and forth. And look at these guys are on rubber leg street. Look at them. They're dazed. They're confused. Oh, kick. Oh, kick to the back, kick to the back of the back head. Of the head. Oh, Tanaka all wobbly on the rope there. Oh, no, full, another... Full Nelson into a Ooh. suplex, dragon suplex oh. by Hayabusa. That took a lot of strength on the part of Hayabusa after all the punishment Hayabusa has taken. Tanaka has taken an awful lot of shots to the back of the head. He can't last much longer. Oh, and Falcon another arrow. Falcon Arrow. The Falcon the Arrow. One. Now this has got to be it. One, oh. two, three, and that's it. That's it. As the fans rush to ringside, Unbelievable. John, you were right. Third time the charm. Look at this. Paibusa gets him up there. Beautiful Falcon arrow. Manages to make the cover. Puts the leg. And Masato Tanaka is out of the tournament. So now Hayabusa advances in this tournament for the double title for the Independent World Heavyweight Championship and the Brass Knuckles World Championship. And more importantly, he is one step closer to getting his revenge against Mr. Garuske. But Hayabusa has to face the gladiator, Mike Awesome, next in the semifinals. the historic temple called Ensuji in Taiwan. This is where Hayabusa went out of his way to work on his craft. Hayabusa, the man they call the flying assassin. Now, with both feet planted firmly on the ground, he humbles himself and takes himself to the ancient masters of the world to further hone his craft and become the consummate professional in the wrestling ring. It was at this temple in Taiwan where Hayabusa met with Mr. Kohn, the famous master of Tai Kyoku Ken. It was here, away from all the distractions of the modern world and modern life, that Hayabusa would take his craft, his skills, to the next level in his ever-continuing battle against his arch-rival.
大转身。手不能动，我过来还要站着。手要看这边。每天就随着说。嗯，最牛的，哎，随时来，来我们来讨教，好不好？好，谢谢你。His victory over Masato Tanaka, Hayabusa, in the semi-final match, faces an opponent who is much bigger, much stronger, the intimidating gladiator, Mike Awesome. Hayabusa, I'm gonna kick your ass! And then I'm gonna fight Minoski for the belt! Indeed, Mike Awesome, a true physical specimen and known to many fans in North America from his days in ECW and WCW. This will be a hard-fought battle. And remember, John, these two have battled in the past over these same titles. And you can even see that match on the Tokyo Pop video, Total Carnage. And there we see him, the flying assassin, Hayabusa, eyeing up his opponent in the ring. And remember, in the last match, it was more of a sportsman-like attitude because Tanaka and Hayabusa are friends. Here, no such deal. These two are going to be going at it tooth and nail. Absolutely awesome. It's more of a rule breaker. And remember, this is Japanese soil. I think we know who the crowd favorite in this match is going to be. <laughs> Hayabusa seems to be well focused, staring at Mike Awesome. I don't think Hayabusa is taking his eyes off of Mike Awesome this whole time, ever since he entered the ring. They're both ready. They're both ready. All right, here we go. Match is underway. Stare down. Ah, a little bit of psychological warfare here to get things started. Well, if you could beat your opponent psychologically, that's half the battle won. Oh, test of strength. Awesome is always going to win a test of strength. Nice kip up, though, by Hayabusa. And Awesome looks a little stunned at that. Oh, yes, he's definitely surprised at the resiliency of Hayabusa. Look at these two. Cagey. Again, more psychological games, trying to freak each other out. Half of the battle is psychology. Psychology is 50% of the battle. And, uh,. I think, uh... Ooh, and oh, and a big chop there from Awesome. Oh, yeah, well, th I think that's what Awesome is going to have to do. Uh, use his strength, use those Ooh. clotheslines, those power moves, like those clotheslines, the power slams he does, the power moves off the top rope. Wow, and another one, a another third clothesline. clothesline. That is what Awesome is going to have to use. And look, he's going up to the top rope already before Hayabusa. Wow! Clothesline, flying clothesline, flying clothesline off the top turnbuckle. I can't believe that we're seeing Mike Awesome going off the top rope before Hayabusa. Unbelievable. Another clothesline. Well, remember, Awesome is a very agile 300 pounder. What? And we'll see this right here. But oh, certainly. Plancha, plancha, plancha off the top. This oh. is Hayabusa's territory, and this is really smart wrestling on Mike Awesome's part. He is already not only psyching out Hayabusa by going into his territory, but he is laying him out. They're already out in the crowd fighting amongst the debris. You're right. Mike Awesome is playing Hayabusa's own game by doing a little bit of high flying. Ooh. Oh, clothesline. And using that awesome power, that is what Awesome is going to have to do. Awesome has the advantage ooh, when it comes to upper body strength. And once again, Hayabusa has got to get something going here. Mike Awesome has totally dominated in the early stages of this match. And as the referee counts, Hayabusa is back in the ring the hard way. Awesome pushed him back in. But I think Hayabusa, like you said, is resilient. And I think it's the fans' cheers that will make Hayabusa resilient. Whoa! Oh! Well, he's going to need a lot of resilience after that one, after that chair shot. And we're going for it again! One! Two, three, no. oh! And look at this, he knocks the seat right out of the chair as he lays it right over Hayabusa's head. Well, you gotta expect that in FMW. This is hardcore. 
This is unbelievable. I can't believe that it's taken this long for Hayabusa to get things going, man. Mike Awesome is totally dominating. This match may end a lot sooner than you think, John. Irish whip. Oh, face buster. Oh, face first. As Hayabusa goes Here we go. Down. And a splash. Splash, splash by Mike Awesome. Goes for the cover. One, two, oh, two count. Unbelievable. But, but remember, Dan, Mike Awesome weighs more than 300 pounds. And sometimes the bigger guys, they run out of fuel early. So maybe Hayabusa can outlast Mike Awesome. Uh -oh. oh, the Argentine backbreaker! The Argentine backbreaker! Shades of Argentina Rocker from the 1950s. And this move is still very effective when it comes to working on your back and making the opponent submit. Again, working on Hayabusa's back like that, he's not going to be able to do anything with a sore back. I think the referee is... Whoa, and he oh. just dumps him out of the ring! Like, like a ragdoll! He's garbage! Mike Awesome just throws him out of the ring. Well, FMW is known for garbage wrestling, hardcore wrestling, but Hayabusa is not garbage. The fans are on his side, but he's in trouble. Oh! And he clears the whole first three rows right out of there. Mike Awesome sends him flying into the chairs. Hayabusa's really got to get something going here. I I'm serious. This match could be over before it even gets going here because Hayabusa has had no offense so far. Yeah, flying into the chairs, that's not the kind of flying that Hayabusa is usually used to doing. He needs to get to the top turnbuckle, to the Falcon's Nest, to do his signature high-flying move. Ooh. Oh, stiff kick by the Gladiator, Mike Awesome. Unbelievable stuff here for Mike Awesome. He is totally, totally dominating Hayabusa in this match. But if this turns into a marathon, Hayabusa will have the Ooh. advantage. Hey, Hayabusa is being resilient. Finally. Making those, making those comeback forearm smashes into the face of Mike Awesome. Oh. oh, awesome miss. Now Hayabusa needs to capitalize on the fallen big man. And isn't it ironic that Awesome tries a high-flying move that was so successful in the match and it messed him up there. Body slam. This is a setup. This is a setup. Here we Hayabusa go. To try one of his sentons. Oh. Senton splash. Followed by the Asai Moonsault. The Asai Moonsault. And a cover. One, two. Oh. No, there's no way. I mean, that was a great-looking senton, but it didn't have the devastating effect it should have. And that's just not enough to put away the big Mike Awesome this early in the match. There's no way. Well, Mike Awesome weighs 300 plus pounds. He's bigger than some of Hayabusa's other opponents. Oh, suplex by Hayabusa. It took a lot of strength to take that big man down. And it looks like Hayabusa has finally got things going his way. What are we going to see here? Looks like a double underhook. A tiger hammer. driver. Tiger, oh, tiger, tiger driver. driver. You say Tiger Driver, I say Powerbomb, I say that was awesome. Exactly. It doesn't matter what you call it, it was amazing. Yeah, it doesn't matter what you call these moves, you dirt sheet dogs. This is just exciting action, no matter what you want to call it. Body slam by Hayabusa. And, and here Hayabusa, we go now. He goes to the, the Falcon's Nest. Nest. The Phoenix Splash. The Phoenix Splash. And Hayabusa is going for an encore. Another back, one. Back to the Falcon's Nest. Hayabusa is setting up awesome for the... Whoa! Oh, the Firebird Splash. The Firebird Splash. One, two, oh, two Check counts. Check this one out. There you go. There's your Phoenix. And, then, and here, the Firebird, 450 degrees, wow, the straight fire, on the money. Hayabusa calls that the Firebird Splash, but it still was not enough to put away the Gladiator, Mike Awesome. And what's he going to do here? Going for a big body slam with the big man, look at him! Oh! Up, awesome like that, unbelievable! Where does Hayabusa get the strength to pick up a 300-plus pound man after taking all that punishment, especially on the back? Well, that's where those techniques that he learned at that temple in Taiwan come to play. Certain secrets we don't even understand. Hayabusa has that great strength. Well, may yeah, maybe Hay Hayabusa is more disciplined now after learning the martial arts technique in Taiwan, but, but still... Awesome is in control once again. Uh oh. Goes to the top. Good lord, what are we going to see here? I think, oh, I think I know what this is. Oh, wow. The awesome bomb. But the it was awesome reversed. bomb. The awesome bomb. Oh. But that was reverse awesome bomb. Backwards off the top rope. It's devastating enough frontwards, but backwards like that. Unbelievable. Mike Awesome's back is hurting. Yeah, I think it did backfire on Mike Awesome. Oh, but he goes going for the cover. One. Two, three, oh no. Hayabusa kicks out. A great move there by Mike Awesome. Absolutely spectacular. But you're right, John. It could have taken more out of Awesome than Hayabusa. Ooh. Oh, power bomb. That's the specialty. Mike Awesome loves his power bomb. And now he's going back up. He's going to the Falcon's Nest, trying to do the high fly that Hayabusa normally has. Ooh. The frog splash! And the referee counts. One, two, oh. And look at this. Look at the form. Look at this for 300-pound man. The grace and form of Mike Awesome. It's beautiful. Poetry in motion. The, what? Poetry? He's not a chicken. Poetry in motion, you mean.
Anyway, uh, Mike Lawson is still in control, and he's going for a chin lock. This is a submission. I think the referee is asking Hayabusa, do you give up? A chin lock. This reminds me of the old days of Sergeant Slaughter and the Iron Sheik here with a version of the Camel Clutch well, by Mike Awesome. Well, this, this here is the See? Camel Clutch. I said a version of the Camel Clutch, John. Okay, well, this is the definite version of the Camel Clutch. Thank you. You're welcome. Applied by Mike Awesome. What, awesome let go. I don't know what that was about. I, I think maybe Awesome is getting a little bit too cocky. He wants to torture him a bit more before he puts him away. Well, that may be a mistake. He could have put him away right there. Look at these shots, though. Yeah, well, look at these big shots to the head. How many of those could you take, John? Well, Hayabusa is certainly taking the beating from Mike Awesome. Hayabusa is going to have to take the big man down and go for the high flying. Oh, Awesome missed that into the turnbuckle. And missed he missed the close line. line. Oh, suplex. Suplex nicely done by Hayabusa. And Mike Awesome rolls out of the ring for a breather after that one, man. He's not hanging around. Uh-oh. Well, Hayabusa is going, oh, for a somersault press. Somersault press on the awesome Mike Awesome. And look at this. The signature Hayabusa move hits the mark every time. Beautifully well done. And look at the crowd. They don't even have seats anymore, but they don't care. That's right. They want to see Hayabusa do those high-flying moves even if they lose their seat. All right, what's Hayabusa thinking here? Is he going back up to the Falcon's Nest? Well, right now he's thinking about the double title. Oh! Excellent cutoff there by Mike Awesome. Catches him in midair with a big clothesline. Hayabusa's flat on his back again. Along with thinking about their next move, they are both thinking about winning that double title held by Mr. Ganoske. And speaking of double, here's... Whoa! Oh, double beautiful. arm! Double arm DDT by Mike Awesome. That was beautifully done there by Mike Awesome. You know, you're talking about them thinking about the belts, but I don't think so. I think they're in the heat of the match. They're thinking about making it through this match alive. Never, about, never mind thinking about the next title match. Well, in a way, that's true because every bump you take could be your last. So, yeah, you have to think in the moment. And at this moment, Hayabusa does not look very good. And we just saw it outside the ring there. Mike Awesome's got the table set up. And you know how much he likes to put people through tables. Especially in FMW. No doubt. FMW, I've seen him do it in a banquet hall. It doesn't matter where he is, he puts guys through tables. But it's here at FMW where he's most effective. And look at this. Oh! Oh! It's the reversal! Mike Awesome ends up going through the table. And Hayabusa flies with a somersault press onto the table. That is FMW style. Wow, right onto Mike Awesome. Landing right on top of him. Check it out, right here. Fire it. Oh, oh! Awesome! Somersault press onto Beautiful. A, a table to boot. So that is really got to hurt Mike Awesome in the back. And if Hayabusa is smart, he should work on that back constantly. And the big man is down now. You know, some of what you were saying earlier may be coming into play now. Maybe Mike Awesome, he's feeling a little bit running out of gas now because he was doing all that high-octane stuff off the top. That's right. Maybe uh, Mike Awesome is spent. Uh, he did all he could do. He wasted his repertoire, so to speak, early in the match. So maybe he has nothing left. Well, we'll have to see what happens. Uh-oh. Is this the Falcon Arrow? I think, yeah. Hayabusa is setting up Mike Awesome. Oh! The Falcon Arrow! The Falcon Arrow! The Falcon Arrow! Whoa. Oh, no. Look at this. I just love this move. I can never get enough of this. And look at with the 300 pound Mike Awesome. He does it beautifully with grace. Oh, a, combi it. a combination of power and grace on the part of Hayabusa. Now, where can Hayabusa take this now? He still hasn't been able to pin the big man. What can he do? What can he do to put Mike Awesome's shoulders to the mat for that three count? Well, like you have said, I mean, Hayabusa has a wide variety of finishing maneuvers. It's just a matter of which ones he'll use and how often or how often he'll use them in order to put his man away. That's true. He might have... Oh! And a low desperate blow. low blow by Mike Awesome there, cutting off Hayabusa as he was heading up to the Falcon's Nest. Uh oh! Right now it's Austin uh -oh. on the Falcon's Nest in Hayabusa territory. Oh no, we're gonna see it. Another power bomb yeah. off the top. Yeah, I think we're gonna see another awesome, awesome bomb. Can Hayabusa cut him off? No. Nope. By Mike Austin. Whoa! Oh, oh, reversal. Gee, what a reversal! That was a reversal by Hayabusa. Good lord, I don't think that went exactly as planned. That looked to me like that hurt both individuals. Hayabusa almost landed right on his head. I think you're right. Hey, we have some of Hayabusa's friends at ringside. Tanaka, Sasaki. They're encouraging Hayabusa. Ooh. Oh! Oh! I think that was a her and Conrana attempt, but it backfired. Mike and Awesome turned the power bomb. Three, one, two, two. Oh. I can't even count straight, man. I'm so caught up in this match. 
You can't even speak English properly for this Japanese match. Boy, I'm so ashamed of you. But anyway, right now, Awesome is still in control. And, oh, I think this is a setup for another suplex. Suplex! Oh! oh. He dropped him right on his head. Oh, my God. What's Hayabusa going to do now? And Here look, Awesome Masato, crawling over. Masato Tanaka is trying to encourage Hayabusa. That's, That's going to take a lot more run. than encouragement oh. from Tanaka to get out of this one. Now, and, and as you mentioned, Tanaka and Hayabusa had a friendly rivalry, rivalry in the previous match, but this is no friendly rivalry. This is ugly, very heated. Oh, no, this one's awesome going until the end. Ooh! Oh, Powerbomb! All right, another pinning attempt. One, two. Look at this. This is awesome specialty, man. All forms of the Powerbomb. That is Mike Awesome's specialty. And look at it, once again, but still not enough to keep Hayabusa pinned to the mat. You're right, Dan. That is awesome specialty. He called that the awesome bomb because it's always totally awesome. I'm not arguing with you on that one, that's for sure. And now he looks like he's getting ready to finish things off here. Can he put away Hayabusa and move on in the tournament? For the double title held by Mr. Gano Stick. Oh, oh no! Reversal by Hayabusa. Oh, he a cradle, by the leg. cradle, cradle into a pin. One, two, oh. No, no, Hayabusa wasn't covering him nearly strong enough to get the three count there. Oh, full Nelson into it. Oh. Dragon suplex, dragon suplex, dragon suplex. One, two, wow. three. Yes! He gets the pin with he the did suplex. It. Unbelievable move by Hayabusa there. With the dragon suplex, your winner advancing in this tournament for the double title, the Falcon Hayabusa. John, the action continues to be hot and heavy here in FMW. Two spectacular matches there. Hayabusa victorious over Masato Tanaka. Hayabusa able to beat the Gladiator, Mike Awesome as well. He's clinched his spot in the tournament. It's the final match of the night and probably the most important match of Hayabusa's career. Absolutely, Dan. For the double title for the Independent World Heavyweight Championship and the Brass Knuckles Championship, the champion, Mr. Ganosuke, the challenger, the flying assassin, Hayabusa. And not only is there going to be a lot of action, but there's also a lot of personal animosity involved. Let's take a look at the history between Ganosuke and Hayabusa. This is the future Hayabusa, Eiji Izaki, born in Kumamoto on November 29, 1968. And here we have the future Mr. Ganosuke, Masa Honda, born in Nagasaki, June 20th, 1968. And these men met on the campus of Kumamoto Shoko University in April 1987. And their friendship became closer and closer as they both learned they loved professional wrestling. One day, the two of them sat down together and watched an actual FMW tape, which contained one of their most deadliest death matches of all time but to these two young men it was an inspiration and they decided that yes this is the way that we are going to live our lives and the two of them journeyed to the FMW training center to take that next step into the world of professional wrestling. After watching their idols Onita and Tarzan Goto on the FMW deathmatch tape they turned their dream into a reality and they discovered by doing basic drills that Life was not all glitz and glamour during their first steps into the world of professional wrestling. Indeed, that is true. They had to work long, hard hours, exercising, learn all the routines, and they also had to do such menial tasks as cleaning the master's laundry, cleaning the gym, preparing food. It was a rigorous ordeal for the two young men. Finally, all those days of doing chores and squats paid off as Izaki 
made his debut on May 5th, 1992, and Honda debuted in June in 1992. And these guys got beat up every day by the veterans of the sport, but they were willing to pay their dues. And finally, they had a match against each other, Izaki versus Honda, and the fans were starting to get interested in this friendly rivalry. One day, Honda changed his name to Mr. Ganosuke, named after a movie character. And Ganosuke started to get recognition, sometimes being picked for main events, while Izaki was still wrestling in preliminary matches. There started to be a distance between these two friends, but while Izaki wished his friend Honda well, Izaki decided to try his craft in Mexico. And it was here that Izaki became the man that we all knew later as the flying assassin Hayabusa. He crafted his high-flying maneuvers, meeting such stars as Vampiro, and turning himself into a mysterious oriental creature, which totally mystified but excited the Mexican wrestling fans. And soon Hayabusa was one of the biggest stars ever wrestling in Mexico. But now it was time for him to once again reconsider his options. He was now a great star in Mexico, and this enabled him to return to Japan, where he competed in the Super J Cup with such stars as Chris Benoit and Jushin Thunder Liger. It was in this tournament that he fought hard, and the Japanese fans were amazed by his new aerial tactics and stunning appearance. And he even fought his North American equivalent, Sabu, in these deadly matches. Hayabusa returned to FMW, ready to show the fans his vast improvement. But he was hit with bad news. Two veterans he idolized when he was a child, Tarzan Goto and Atsushi Onita, retired from the sport, thus leaving the FMW organization with a void. Bad times, bad business for FMW. But Hayabusa hung in there, willing to give it his all, night after night, sacrificing his body. But it was this supreme sacrifice by Hayabusa that ended up being his undoing as he was the main star of the promotion and fighting night after night in these grueling main events left him wounded in the hospital. But still, Hayabusa could not stay away. The promotion demanded that Hayabusa come back for the fans in FMW and Hayabusa did just that. And Hayabusa, even though he was injured, took on this supreme challenge in this match between FMW and the invading IWA promotion out of Puerto Rico with $200,000 at stake. All of this on Hayabusa's shoulders, adding to his injuries, explosives blowing off all over the arena. And in the end, sad to say, Hayabusa lost his match. He lost his pride, he let down the fans in his opinion, and again, he disappeared and took some time off. Now at the same time, Mr. Ganosuke was fighting hard in IWA, but that promotion was on its final legs, and he would once again return to FMW to face his one-time friend and greatest rival, Hayabusa. Now Hayabusa thought about retiring at this time, but he could not do it, and he had a great singles match against Nakagawa because he could just not leave FMW. His pride, his dignity was on the line. And the fans had a renewed passion and interest in Hayabusa. But one guy who was not welcomed back was this FMW turncoat, Ganosuke. Ganosuke continually disrupted FMW events, trying to get the office to allow him to once again wrestle in the promotion. Finally, after countless efforts by Ganosuke, they had to let him wrestle again. And this affected Hayabusa in a very tortured way. He didn't know how to feel. Here was his greatest friend coming back, causing all these problems for the promotion, yet he still felt a great kinship. Finally, FMW gave in they give Ganosuke what he wanted, a match against his former friend, Hayabusa. 
The promotion arranged a tag team match pitting Ricky Fuji and Hayabusa versus Oya and Mr. Ganosuke. Ganosuke wanted to show up his former friend. Ganosuke had jealous feelings toward Hayabusa, who was doing just fine in FMW, while Ganosuke suffered in the other promotion. Now, even though Ganosuke pinned Ricky Fuji in this match, Ganosuke still considered this a win over Hayabusa. Finally, the inevitable took place. After a tainted victory in that tag team match, Ganosuke was allowed finally to have his match with Hayabusa. But it was not to be any ordinary match. No, it would be a mask versus hair match with Hayabusa's mask on the line and Ganosuke's yes. hair on the line. Hayabusa wanted to bury the hatchet, start from scratch. Mr. Ganosuke seemed to be torn, not knowing if he should renew his friendship with Hayabusa. But Hayabusa was willing to give Ganosuke another chance. Hayabusa offered his hand in friendship as the ultimate gesture only to be attacked viciously by Ganosuke, beating on him, kicking him in the gut, and pounding him down into the mat. And in the most vicious insult of all, he beat on him, he power bombed him, and he destroyed Hayabusa in the middle of the ring, and he ripped his mask off, running away the ultimate insult to Hayabusa, a torn man destroyed by his once friend, stealing his mask. Soon after his unwelcome return to FMW, Ganesuke was still receiving outsider treatment disliked by the office, the fans, and the wrestlers, but Ganosuke was winning match after match, and he even won the double title from Masato Tanaka. Ganosuke was running rampant against the wrestlers of FMW. This match involves something that Hayabusa has earned and something that Ganesuke has stolen. This involves a double title and lots and lots of mixed emotions.
when Ganesuke... Oh, whoa, so much is going on. Mr. Arai is in the ring. The leader of FMW, president of FMW. And you know how significant this match is when Mr. Arai is in the center of an FMW ring. Like we said earlier, probably the greatest match and most important match in FMW's history to this point. A double title on the line. The Independent World Heavyweight Championship and the Brass Knuckles Championship as the referee proudly displays both belts to this vast crowd in Yokohama. And what's going through the members and the crowd of the FMW fans? They must be just as emotionally torn as these two men are, seeing their favorite promotion reduced to this bitter feud. And Hayabusa has carried the entire promotion on his shoulders for a long time. After Onita retired, after Tarzan Goto left, and after that, Turncoat left, showing no loyalty to FMW whatsoever. You can see the intensity, the emotion, the calculated, cool moves of Hayabusa. He's not his usual self. You can tell he's in a different state of mind leading into this match, much more calm and collected than usual. Both men feeling each other out very cautiously. Looks like they're going for a Greco-Roman knuckle lock test of strength. You, you bring up a good point there, John. They have to feel each other out because they know each other inside out. They know each other's moves. They know each other's history. They train together. This is going to be a tough match for both men. Collar and elbow tie-up. Hammerlock. Hammerlock applied by Ganosuke. Good scientific move there by a rule breaker. Nice reversal by Hayabusa. Again, Ganesuke reverses that hammerlock. Grounding Hayabusa to the ground, but hey, we're seeing some good chain wrestling here. Well, once again, John, the two are feeling each other out. They're trying to get a grip on where they each other is. You know, they haven't worked against each other in a long time. They've both been through significant different training, different experiences, and they're just trying to get a feeling for where they can go. Again, collar and elbow. Side headlock applied by Mr. Ganosuke. Perhaps trying to wear Hayabusa down, grounding down to the mat. Whip into the ropes. Shoulder tackle by Ganosuke. Kip up by Hayabusa. And a leapfrog by Hayabusa. Frankensteiner, Frankensteiner by Hayabusa. And already Ganosuke is rolling out of the ring. Look at that, beautifully executed by Hayabusa, but look, Ganesuke, he wants out already. Oh, Hayabusa missed with that high-flying move. Clothesline, clothesline. Nasty. nasty clothesline by Ganesuke. I think Ganesuke was smart by getting out of the ring to catch his breath and to perhaps to throw Hayabusa off his game plan. Yes, you bring up a good point there. He's definitely oh. going to be trying to psych out Hayabusa as this match continues. And right now, Hayabusa is taking his time, catching his breath as the referee makes the count. Hayabusa still has to get back into the center of the ring or else he'll be out of this match and out of the title picture. Oh, come on, John. You really think that's going to happen? Please. You know these two are going to fight to the bitter end. Nobody's going to win on a count out on this one. Well, I, I think you're right. I think the referee definitely wants to see a, a clear-cut winner in this match as well as all the fans in the arena. I, I don't even think that matters. The fans are sure important, but it's between these two men. They they want to have a clean winner, man. Neither one of them are going to go for a count-out victory. They want to pin their opponent one, two, three. Well, the fans do matter. They want to see a clear-cut winner. Oh, hey, Hayabusa got Ganesuke in his Achilles heel, so to speak, his right. bad knee. He has a history of bad knee problems, and who would know that better than Hayabusa? And you can bet that it's going to be a factor in this match. And look at Hayabusa smart, getting the drop kick in there, and now just working on that leg of Ganesuke. Smart wrestling indeed by Hayabusa. Going after that one body. Oh, leg drop. Leg drop onto that bad knee of Ganesuke. And look at him reefing on the ankle too. Not only is he working the knee, but he's reefing on that ankle of Ganesuke. And Ganesuke makes it to the rope, so the referee has to break this. But Hayabusa dragging Ganesuke to the center of the ring to a to further damage that Achilles tendon, so to speak. And once again, we're seeing some great rat wrestling from Hayabusa. As all the matches on this tape and in this tournament have shown, Hayabusa is much more than a circus act, much more than a high-flying aerialist. He's great on the mat as well. And Ganesuke is learning that right now. Ganesuke again goes for the ropes. Referee has to call for a clean break. 
And again, look at Hayabusa. I mean, even though we can't see his face, it's all there in the body language, the determination, the emotion, you know, the strength that he's bringing to this match to take on what was once his great friend, now his deadliest rival. And Ganesuke, Hayabusa's deadliest rival, is uh, apparently having trouble getting back into the ring. And with that bad wheel, that bad knee, it's no wonder. That's right. And look at Hayabusa, though. Smart, calm, collected, waiting till he gets him back in there and going right after the knee again. Very smart wrestling by Hayabusa. And you just said Hayabusa was waiting for Ganesuke to be get back into the ring. I guarantee you, if the situation were reversed, if Ganesuke were in the ring, Hayabusa were on the outside, Ganesuke would not let up on Hayabusa. He you're, would show no mercy. You're absolutely right, John. Just like Ganesuke has shown no Ooh. mercy throughout this entire feud. What really sickens me about this feud, Ganesuke has lost matches to Hayabusa in the past. He beat Ricky Fuji, Hayabusa's tag team partner, in a tag team match, even though he did not actually pin Hayabusa. But he always twists stories around, making it seem like he won up Hayabusa in some way. That's true. Gasuke always has to, you know, justify things to himself, right? And that's what's going through his mind. He's got every excuse in the book. He left the promotion. He deserted FMW at the time of their leader Onita's retirement. And now he just thinks he can come back and just run roughshod Hayabusa. Boost is going to nip that one in the bud. It really sickened me right now. Ganesuke is in great pain. Hayabusa has the advantage now, but it really sickened me when Ganesuke lost that hair versus mask match, and yet Ganesuke ripped off the mask of Hayabusa, even though he did not win that match. So right now, this creep, Ganesuke, deserved, he deserves the pain he's receiving right now with his figure four leg lock. But he makes his way over to the ropes. Yeah, you bring up a great point. I mean, taking the mask off Hayabusa, that's the ultimate insult. That's worse than throwing him in barbed wire, worse than setting him on fire. That is the ultimate insult when you take a man's mask. The mask is a very sacred symbol in Mexico and Japan. Hayabusa is wrestling both, both places honing his craft, and now it's paid off as he goes for the double championship. Ooh! Inzugiri! Oh! Inzugiri! Inzugiri! Shades of Antonio Inoki, but hey, Hayabusa's still standing. And look at that, a great move there by Gonsuke. You know, he's got, Hayabusa's been working that other leg, and he manages to whip him around, get that kick in there. Smart thinking there. Oh, and he takes him down with an armbar. Armbar, armbar applied by Gonsuke. Ganesuke working over the arm of Hayabusa. And hey, look, he's cheating. He's getting that extra leverage from the ropes there. Oh, but Hayabusa's also got the ropes as well. So the referee has to call for a break. And look at Ganesuke still having trouble walking around that busted wheel. I think Ganesuke did indeed show a lot of jealousy. Ooh. Oh, Ganesuke is jealous of Hayabusa's popularity in FMW. After Ganesuke turned his back on FMW and left the promotion, Ganesuke was jealous that Hayabusa was being promoted as the main star in FMW and was holding his own through thick and thin. Well, you're absolutely right. And look at how the, t the tables have turned here. We, need, we now see Ganesuke doing the exact same thing that Hayabusa was doing. He's picked out a body part and he is working it. And we all know that how important the arm is to Hayabusa. A great, a great, great smart move there by Ganesuke. And the referee called for a break, so the hammerlock had to be released. But Ganesuke, again, going after that arm, that one body part, like you said. On, oh, nice. Arm bar, arm bar, nasty arm bar. And Hayabusa is in great pain. No mask can hide that. Almost but, a dropping kind of arm bar there. Very unique uh, but, execution there. But look, Ganesuke was holding on to his knee, so, you know, he has problems as well. I mean, he has a bad wheel. How, lo how much longer can Ganesuke hold up? See, with every... With every bump against the mat, Ganesuke hurts his knee. Not a good sign for either man. Definitely. Look at the way he has to use the ropes to actually pull himself up off the ground. But, I mean, if he can continue to keep Hayabusa grounded, I mean, that's what you have to do with Hayabusa, right? He's the high-flying aerialist, and Ganesuke knows that, so he's trying to keep him grounded on the mat. Reversal by Hayabusa. Oh! A knee in the Ganesuke, but Hayabusa almost fell out of the ring. And, oh, now there's a smart move. Did you see that? Straight for that bad knee, a drop kick. You know, we see drop kicks to the face and to the head. One right to the knee there. Baseball slide there by Hayabusa. Hayabusa goes, whoa! Moonsault! 
Oh, that looked awesome. beautiful. It was. Look at that. Excellent. Always graceful. Beautiful execution from Hayabusa. But look at this. Ganesuke has got the upper hand oh. now. Yeah, into the guard railing. Yeah, Ganesuke will do whatever it takes to hold on to that Ooh, double title. Oh, clothesline over the guardrail. He'll do whatever it takes to hold on to that double title and whatever it takes to hurt his former friend, Hayabusa. And Ganesuke still hanging on to that knee, hurting very badly. Yeah, he's definitely rolled himself back into the ring to get a little bit of a break there while Hayabusa gets back in as well. Ganesuke picking up Hayabusa. Ooh! Oh, hey, wait, that's a, vari that's a variation of the Falcon Arrow. That's one of Hayabusa's moves. You're absolutely right, John. Take a look at this. Bang! You're right, the Falcon Arrow. Wow! Not only is he going to you know, beat him, but he's going to slap him in the face further by stealing his moves. You know, there, there's no end to what Ganesuke will do to win this match. Ganesuke, hey, look, Ganesuke just mocked Shinzei Shinzaki, Hayabusa's friend, Ooh. by doing that praying powerbomb. But, hey, Ganesuke is hurting that exactly. bad knee. Yep. Then look at, there's Shinzaki looking on. Yeah, I don't think Shinzaki was too happy after uh, Ganesuke mockingly did that praying powerbomb move. Well, he might have done it to mock, but he could have hurt himself at the same time because, like you said, he's still holding that knee. And to do moves like the powerbomb, you need a strong knee. Oh, Ooh. clothesline by Ganesuke. And what really sickens me about this feud, when Ganesuke was pushed as the main event star in FMW, oh, that's another slap in the face of Jinzei Shinsake. Another powerbomb. Oh, wait. Oh, Hayabusa reverses. Reversal. Look at this replay here nicely, like you said. Going up for the powerbomb, but Hayabusa turns it into a Frankenstein runner. Yeah. <laughs> Hurricane Conrada in Mexico, Frankensteiner in Japan, made famous by the Steiner brothers in Japan, but no matter what you want to call it, it's, it's always graceful, so fun to watch when Hayabusa And look at, what are we going to get here? Another big move from Hayabusa. Oh! Summer salt press by Hayabusa, utilizing those skills he learned in Mexico and Japan. Oh, beautiful. Always well done and always right on the money. And now he rolls Gonsuke back into the ring again. Hayabusa going for Ooh, leg drop, nice. leg drop. Hit right on the money. And you know that really hurts right across the neck, right across the throat there with the leg. And what really sickens me about this feud when Ganesuke was pushed as the main event star in FMW. Oh, powerbomb early in his career in FMW. Was Hayabusa jealous? No, he was happy for his friend Ganesuke at the time. Not at all. You're absolutely right there. And so then Hayabusa decided to you know, learn his craft in Mexico, but he was happy for Ganesuke when he was... Ooh, oh, nice suplex. And nice look at suplex. that bridge. Good Beautiful bridge. One, bridge. two. So I think Hayabusa has shown a lot of loyalty to Ganesuke all along since college days through thick and thin, but is Ganesuke the same way? No. Well, that's, and that's why this is a much more important match for Hayabusa than it is for Ganesuke, because I think much more is on the line for Hayabusa. And look at this nice reversal here by Ganesuke. Into a cradle, into a pin. One, two, oh. Very nice attempt, but I think this match means tons more to Hayabusa because he has so much more at stake, and he feels so betrayed, and, you know, he feels so strongly about the FMW promotion that this match means much more than those double titles to Hayabusa. Hey, look. Oh, the Phoenix Splash. The Phoenix Splash off the Falcon's nest. Oh, and did you see that? He hit him right on the mark there, right across the chest. He's going to gonna give him another one? Yeah, another high-flying move. Oh, oh. Right. The 450 called the Firebird Splash. The Firebird Splash. And you can bet it's called the Firebird because that burns your insides when he lands on you with that intensity. Look at that. Landed right on the stomach there. And another shot right on the money by Hayabusa. And some of Hayabusa's FMW friends are watching at ringside. Ricky Fuji, Tanaka. Of course, you know who they're rooting for. Oh, uh, well, I think we know who the whole crowd is rooting for. I don't know of anyone that's rooting for Ganesuke. Well, yeah, Ganesuke is definitely not. Ooh, oh, Falcon Arrow. Falcon Arrow. Falcon Arrow, one, two, oh. Yeah, Ganesuke, certainly not the crowd favorite in this arena tonight. And I hope Ganesuke enjoyed that after he used the Falcon Arrow earlier on Hayabusa. Now he had to use it. He got it right on himself. Serves him right. Paybacks are hell. Body slam, and that usually is followed up by one of Hayabusa's signature moves off the Falcon's nest. Here he goes. Where he's very much at nope. home. No, nope. oh. Hayabusa manages to get up. He knocks, I'm oh, sorry, Ganesuke gets up. He knocks Hayabusa. What are we going to see here? What is, what is this? Oh, no, I think uh, he's going to use that upper body strength of his. Ooh. Oh, power bomb by Ganesuke. Very interesting power bomb there by Ganesuke. 
But Hayabusa's up. Hayabusa's up again. This with a close line by Hayabusa. Oh, good overhead suplex by Ganesuke, but Ganesuke's knee gave out again. Well, I think Hayabusa's head might have given out after that one. He landed right on the cranium in that suplex. And the referee is making the count. One of these men has to get up. In order for this match to continue, Ganesuke is up, but barely. You know, we talk about, you know, the strength and the determination and heroic nature of Hayabusa, but we have to hand it to Ganesuke because he is in tough spot and he is responding. He is working. Oh, oh, oh! Ganesuke's knee gave out again. He wasn't able to hold up Hayabusa. Ganesuke tried for one of his high-impact moves, but again, that bad wheel gave in. But as much as it might have affected Ganesuke as well, you can tell that it also did have some effect on Hayabusa. He's also having trouble there getting back to his feet. Ganesuke, oh! Picks up Hayabusa. And, and a cover? One, one two, two three. Oh, that was close. Can't pull it off. No way. Can't pull it off. Just, uh, oh, there's Jinzei Shinzaki, Hayabusa's loyal friend. And the look on Shinzaki's face says it all. Never changing, never moving. He is so intently watching his friend Hayabusa try to beat his arch rival. And Ganesuke picks up Hayabusa. Reversal by Hayabusa. Oh! Kick to the back of the head of Ganesuke. And how can he follow this up with? Kick to the gut. Hayabusa still very much in this match. Oh, oh, Whoa. dragon screw, dragon screw leg takedown by Ganosuke. Look at that beautiful, beautiful move there. And that really wrenches the knee. And once again, Ganosuke thinking because he has to ground Hayabusa. And what better way than to take out that knee? Oh, oh Hayabusa looks hurt, but then again. <laughs> they both look hurt in this one. Yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah, both of these men are hurt. Both of these men have bad wheels. But then again, a lot of these wrestlers do not wrestle 100% healthy. They're never injury free. They always have bad wheels, so they always know the contest has to go on. Well, you're absolutely right there. I mean, look at the work Hayabusa put in when he was leading the promotion all by himself. His body was constantly wrecked. Waist lock by Ganesuke. Oh! Low blow. And that's probably the first really nasty under the table move we've seen for Hayabusa. Suplex into a bridge, into a pinning combination. One, two, all. And a beautiful bridge there. You know, it's finally had to happen. Hayabusa had to adapt some of the nasty tactics here just so he can get the upper hand. As Ricky Fuji cheers Hayabusa on the ringside, Hayabusa is signaling for another finishing maneuver. Is it the Falcon? The oh, Falcon Arrow! Beautiful! The Falcon Arrow! The Falcon Arrow! One, two, three. Oh, that was close. And that's the second Falcon Arrow that he's given Gonsuke, but I don't think it was enough. Ricky Fuji and Tanaka look surprised. How did Gonsuke get out of that Falcon Arrow? Well, you know why? I know you talk about his friends at ringside, but there's probably one other friend. He's not here in person, but he's here in spirit helping Hayabusa, and that was the master back in Taiwan that taught Hayabusa all those great new moves as well as that keen inner strength, which is he is which he is definitely displaying in this match. Yes, I think that discipline and training really has paid off for Hayabusa as he beat Tanaka and Awesome to earn this shot at the double title. Ooh! And both men are down. Did Gonsuke catch him with that punch? It was hard to tell from this angle. Did he catch him with that punch? Let's see the replay. Oh, yes, he caught Hayabusa right across the jaw with that punch. Nasty. But what really matters is, ooh, Hayabusa had to get up in order to continue and win that independent world heavyweight championship and the brass knuckles championship for himself and for the fans and still hayabusa is able to kick out unbelievable definitely drawing on that inner strength and i also think hayabusa wants to win this double title match in honor of the fmw office oh and then Gansuke in there with a low blow oh no Gansuke picks up hayabusa oh for a power bomb and a pin one, two, two three, oh. And Hayabusa manages to kick out. Oh, upper body strength on the part of Ganesuke using that power bomb. You know, Ganesuke has been very rebellious, very disrespectful toward the FMW office, toward Mr. Arai in the FMW office, and I think the office wants Hayabusa to do FMW crowd. Well, there's no doubt about that. Oh, suplex into a bridge. One, two, three, oh. And look at how Ganesuke did that bridge. That was absolutely amazing. His one bad knee, he did a bridge with one leg. Unbelievable.
Well, he's uh, reaching for that something extra in order to hold on to that double title. Oh, oh Hayabusa gets oh. out of it. Kick to the back of the head of Galisque. Full Nelson into a dragon oh. suplex. Dragon suplex. Dragon suplex by Hayabusa. Good Lord, did you see that? He dropped him right on the head. That wasn't on the shoulders. That wasn't on the back. That was straight on Gunsuke's head. Hayabusa picks up Galisque for a body slam, and that means another trip to the Falcon's Nest with another high-flying move. Combination, oh. combination, Phoenix One, Press and Fire Moon Splash. Three. Yes, it's over. Hayabusa wins. Hayabusa wins. I don't believe it. Wow. What an amazing finish to that match. Oh, unbelievable. Did you see that, John? It was almost a combination of the Phoenix and the Firebird splash together. So the fans got... Look at this. So the fans got two for the price of one. Well, I think he needed to combine those moves to be able to defeat his arch rival. He had to pull it all together, and he did it. And here's Mr. Alive from the FMW office. Hayabusa, you did everybody associated with FMW crowd. Oh, look at this. And the fans are loving it. The wrestlers are loving it. And Hayabusa, most of all, finally, finally has his revenge. Third is the double title, the Independent World Heavyweight Championship and the Brass Knuckles Championship. As the fans roar with approval. Kanosuke. This belt is... お前が戦うまいとなるかまで俺は絶対に誰にも渡さない。今以上にこのベルトの勝ちを挙げてここにいるみんなとベルトを争っていきたいと思います。今日は今日は本当にありがとうございました。<笑> John, can you believe it? Absolutely astounding. That was a great match there from Hayabusa. He's the champion. He's the man. He's everything that every wrestler could ever want to be. You know, he has these great matches, and we finally even know a little bit more about the man, the myth, the legend that is Hayabusa. And to let you in on something, Hayabusa studied English when he was in junior high and high school in Japan, and when he visited Los Angeles, he told me in English that his name and image mean the bird that never dies. And I guarantee you, with his fan support, with his hard work ethic, and his spectacular moves, I think Hayabusa, the man, the persona, the charisma, will live on and on for years to come. For more hardcore wrestling, join us next time. I'm Straight Up John Watanabe, along with Dan the Mouth Levransky. See you next time at Ringside. Brother.